Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Kristen Brooks. There we go. Kristen. Okay. So I've actually seen uh, Kristen present. You were at FETC just recently. You were at GATC, which it's like probably my favorite conference ever. I love Yay. it. And you're actually from Georgia, right? Like you're I am. in Georgia right now. And so um, I, I, I just, I, I met you there. I know we have like cross paths and stuff like this, but like in conferences, you just kind of like do this. And so I was like, Hey, I want to like get to know you better. I want to know all the stuff that you're doing. Cause I know, um, every time I see people walking out of your sessions, they're just jacked. So like, they're so excited. So thanks for taking the time, uh, to be on the podcast because you present and you teach full time. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, I do both. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. this is no. awesome. But I'm super bless- excited. Blessing, blessing for me, seriously. And, and like I said, I, I was, um, any, any people from GATC, I just love. So I'm like that, that, that conference has a very special place in my heart. So I know that, I know that a lot of people from there listen to the podcast. How did you do that? How did, did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Wait, hold on. There, it'll You're watching again. on video. Can, is that going to work for me? Am it, I like, it will. You got to make it a heart and you got to oh hold my, it. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Okay. Well, all right. Obviously my hands are all crooked and stuff. So my heart. <laughs> That's new. My, my heart. Well, there you go. I didn't know this. So okay, do, an, do, a, do a thumbs up. All right, thumbs, thumbs up. up. No, it's not. It's not me. It's you. Okay. For all those listening, <laughs> for all those listening, <laughs> this does not matter. But if you're on YouTube, this is why you're going to watch on YouTube. All right. Yes. So before I get into three questions, uh, I do want to share. You actually have a book that is um, a free Apple book. So the link will be in the description down below. It is titled STEAM for Little Learners, not STEM, but STEAM for Little Learners. So (laughs) give us like the, before we get into your questions, what's like the one minute synopsis of the book? And it's totally free, available to everybody. So you can get it in the description down below. Yes, myself, I'm an Apple Distinguished Educator and myself and uh, four other Apple Distinguished Educators, we all felt like, you know, STEAM, STEM, it's very prevalent right now in education. And Mm -hmm. We felt like, you know, there's a lot out there for middle school and high school on the subject, but we just felt like our littlest learners, preschool and on, that they don't really have a lot out there. And there's a lot of teachers are like, I'm trying to do this thing and I really don't know how to, you know, incorporate it. So we just came up with um, 30 different lessons. They're all laid out in the book using an iPad with Steam and just like simple go from step one to step five and just make it work for you however you want to include it all right you know what i was gonna do i was gonna pretend that there was like some code word that you had to listen to the end of the podcast to get but i'd be like <laughs> just to try that to would pr- be a good one though just try, to, just try to trick people to listen all the way to yeah. you it's probably a bunch of people are like oh okay well i'm done i'll just gonna do that and <laughs> what the book, oh, or what 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 uh he has to ask so hey, hey check it out down below and the beautiful thing about this and i know this about uh kristen is that if you are going through it, you have some questions, just hit her up on X or wherever. And I'm sure she'll kind of give you some advice and thoughts like that too. Don't, don't take advantage of it, but you know, I'm sure she'll throw <laughs> some, some stuff your way. All right. So let's get into the three questions. Um, I want you to say yes. And to that statement you just made it. is that I remember being an educator and being new with ed tech and I would ask my district, you know, oh, I need some help with this. And, you know, a little bit later, I would get an answer. But sometimes you're like right in the moment with your students and they're asking you a question you don't know the answer to. So absolutely hit me up on X or one of the other socials because I started doing that. And there were some great people. Claudio is one I can think of that would answer me like right away. And it was just so helpful to have somebody that you could reach out to that would answer you pretty quickly. I love that. And that's, you know, you know, some of that, some of that's not as good as it used to be, I think, but there, I actually see a lot more of it lately. I don't know why we'll see what happens this year, but it's been, it's been pretty good. So, um, I, I am grateful for that. So let's get into three questions. And yes. the first one, you, you know, you, you've taught, you've worked at the district office level, you are back in the classroom right now. And, uh, I want to make sure by choice, you didn't like, yes. get, right. So that's a really important yeah. like that. This is, I know that you're very passionate <laughs> about teaching. Um, so when you think of like a teacher that inspired you and whether they taught you, you worked with them, who's someone you think of and why? Um, definitely. I wanted to finish my career back in a classroom, back in technology, tech lab, 
using all kinds of devices. And that's why I chose to go back um, because that is where my passion is. That is where my heart is. And working with students, working with educators in that school, it's just, you know, it's nice to be part of a family. Um, and that is who like inspired me was one of my teachers. I actually had her for fifth and sixth grade. And I always just felt like I was part of a family in her class. And when she rolled up with us, I remember thinking like, ah, oh, I get to be in my same family for the next year. Hmm. And, you know, she just definitely, she loved teaching. She loved her students. And you could tell that like, obviously it was about what we learned, but there was always a love, you know, kind of, I don't know, I think of like three ropes, like intertwined in those ropes was her love of just students in general yeah. and trying to make learning fun for us. And I will say that, um, in her class, and I don't remember if it was fifth or sixth, but I kind of feel like it was fifth. And then we we got the Apple II in fifth. And then in sixth, we got the Apple II E. Ooh. And I, I played Oregon Trail. Like I would finish every assignment as fast as I could to play Oregon Trail. Like I was just enamored with it and thought it was the coolest game ever. I We had Lemonade Stand. I did not really prefer right. that one. I only played it occasionally. Um, I loved Oregon Trail and tried to beat it every day uh, i did i actually only knew like we had an apple 2c i didn't know there was an apple 2 i didn't know that i didn't know it was like an apple 2 i knew 2 2e i didn't know i knew 2c i didn't know there was a 2 i'm pretty sure that we had a 2 and then a 2e i love it i, I could it. be wrong it was all right a long well, time ago let's give, a, let's give, a, let's give a shout out to the teacher i love that Yay. i love that you know oh. there's oh, go ahead keep going oh as i say and her name was danette smith so just in case she happens to listen to this, thank you, Mrs. Smith. Uh, and that's, that's the best. I, I, you know, there's, there are so many um, instances that anyone could talk about in their classroom. I think that they're like, little, if you're a teacher, that are little moments like that's what I want to be right. Like that's, you know, eventually that's what I want. And, you know, I was thinking about when we, I was in high school, um, social studies, we had this simulation project and it was a, a gentleman named Doug still. And basically, mm -hmm we all represented these different countries. They're all like fictitious, but you know, loosely based on the world. And every day you'd make decisions. And it was like really interesting because your every decision he had to go and there's like a formula and you'd figure out what the decisions did. And basically, um, no one like made it past like seven days without going to World War Three. <laughs> so, you know, like basically if you did this, this country did this and there's like, oh, this country attacked this country and took over and all this other stuff. And it was, and it just was like the, it was like one of the most fascinating projects because it, it was, it was not, it was just kind of like, what did the class do? You know, it was a very memorable project and it really kind of taught us about politics by immersing ourselves in that. Mm -hmm. and I, like, it's just like little moments like that. I'm like, I, you know, I want to create experiences like that, that my students remember that are really genuine and authentic. And even though they could be the same thing you do every year, they're, they're always a little bit different based on the people that you have in that class that year. So I think that to me is just, just amazing to kind of think back on how many teachers inspire that. All right. I know, I know you told me, you gave me a heads up that you got two for this answer. Cause I know you've yeah. got some pretty great principles, including the one you mm -hmm. have right now. So when you think of the principles you've had, who's someone that really inspired you and why? Yes, um, I will say my first principal, which was Mike Verner, and um, he was an edu uh, sorry, an admin that prioritized his educators, and he would make sure that all of our needs were met, and that in turn would then support the students. Mm -hmm. And so he would walk through the halls every morning, and I remember like when I first, you know, would see him doing this, I was like, is he trying to like catch us? doing something wrong or, you know, I don't know. I just didn't know what to think about it. And then I realized I was like, no, he's literally just checking in with us to make sure that we're okay. You know, that all the students knew any concerns like how they were getting home or uncertainty of where they were supposed to go after school. And he would just, he carried this yellow legal piece of paper folded up in his pocket with a pen. And he would just make a little note of what, you know, if I said this student isn't sure if they're ASP or if they're a car rider, he'd say, okay, I'll get back to you or somebody from the office will. And then he would go and take care of that. And I just loved that attentiveness of his leadership and it influenced, I felt like not only the teachers, but then the students would see that, that he, you know, was checking in on us and therefore checking in on all of them as well. 
And he also was the person that um, in 2004, we were moving from a very small old elementary school to a brand new building. And he said, Hey, if anybody has any great ideas, you know, about some of this extra space we're going to have, let us, let me know. And I want to keep all of my specials the same. And I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Cause we're going to add all these classes or all mm. these grade levels. And so I just proposed, Hey, what about an elementary tech lab? They do it at the middle school and the high school. And I really don't understand why we don't have that in elementary. Mm. And he's like, I love that. We're going to do it. I'm going to go, you go write a business proposal and I'm going to call the district and get it funded. And I was like, okay. And I left there and I got on the phone. I was like calling my brother going, how do you write a business proposal? I'm a teacher. <laughs> but that was the very first one in our district. And now almost every elementary school that, has some sort of tech lab. That's so cool. That talk about legacy, right? Like, and, and you know what, I guarantee you probably get no credit for that, but I'm glad you get, you know, just putting that IT and, you know, credit to your yeah. principal at that time. Now I know you have another one too. You wanted to I share. Do. Yes. And that was all. Yes. And back to that, it was all the way back in 2004. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it was a long time ago right. that we did that. Um, so my other principal that is very inspiring, um, I met her in 2013 and she came to be our principal, um, at Woodstock elementary and she just really from day one embraced innovation because obviously I was in a role of teaching in a tech lab, which at that time was pretty widespread across the district. But you think, OK, we're getting a new principal. She may not want this as a specials a connections. You know, she might change it. And she was there the first year. And that summer she met with every staff member and said, OK, if you could do any job in the school, what would it be and why? And I just looked at her and kind of laughed. And I said, you know, are you sure you want to hear this? And she said, absolutely. Now I want to hear it more. And I said, well, it's, you know, 2014. I've been thinking about this for four years now. Um, you know, they have that thing called the iPad. And I know I already teach in a tech lab and it's awesome. But what about having an iPad lab? And she's like, tell me about it. And I said, well, I think we could get 40 or 50 iPads and all the kids, 1,000 kids could rotate through and use those same 40 mm -hmm. or 50 iPads. And if we color coded it, you know, they would know where to put it up and we could have like self-service and make all kinds of creative ideas using an iPad. And she listened for like 20 minutes and said, okay, we're going to do that next year. And I literally like looked at her, I was like, are you serious? Are you kidding? I'm not sure. And she's like, oh no, I'm serious. And I was like, okay, great. And we did it the next year. And now that is like a combination in our district as well. So iPad labs and tech labs for elementary kids. All right. Double, double horn. Love it. Love it. And her name is Kim Sarasoli. So Mrs. Sarasoli. And this is right now. And here comes your hearts. Hey, you, <laughs> somehow you're doing it. Mine don't work. <laughs> Um, so I remember when you talk about, first of all, the, the first principle, I talk about this all the time. Like I would go in classrooms all the time and you get the novelty of it worn off that way, where people are like, if you only go one once in a while, that's when it terrifies people. Cause it's like, why are they here? But when you go in all the time, it's just, it's just how it is. Mm -hmm. And so you don't, you don't notice it. And then you actually, you know, kind of notice everything that's going on in the sense that you can really support. Cause it's like, Hey, the classroom environment that we've helped create is not conducive to what they're trying to do. Right. But when you don't, right. uh, my, my whole thing is you can't make decisions for classrooms if you're not actually in classrooms. So that, that to me is really, really important. But the other, the other thing I remember, uh, cause a lot of your stories about your current principal remind me of my, um, best principal ever, Kelly Wilkins. And I was in a very similar role to what you did at the five to nine level. And I remember her saying to me, Hey, George, we're like planning our, you know, technology budget for next year. What would you do? And I said, well, that's not my job. Like, like I'm a teacher and she was like, mm, that's why we hired you. Like, I don't know any of this <laughs> stuff. So you got to start planning for it and then tell me what we need. And then we'll see how we can make it fit in the budget. And what was, what was interesting. And I think I learned through that process is that as a teacher, she gave me ownership over the entirety mm -hmm. of the school. So now all of a sudden. Like I had to be really thoughtful of like what I was picking and how it would affect other teachers, as opposed to a lot of admin make those decisions for the schools. They don't have the necessary input. And then it's just easy to complain about it. Right. <laughs> but I didn't want to yeah. complain. I didn't want to hear any complaints because <laughs> I had like, so I had to like talk to the teachers, like what would best benefit you? And I was really thoughtful and like also use some of my, you know, expertise in the area too, and like guide some of the conversations because 
you know, what I knew and thought would work. Some people didn't understand the capabilities at that time, but right. that, that, that's one thing she taught me. And I think it is really uh, exemplary in your, um, your current principle is that when you actually create a space where teachers feel ownership over the success of the school, then there's just, there's just much more, you know, uh, input there more, maybe, you know, kind of focus on, on really make creating amazing learning experiences, not just in your class, but in every class. So I, I love that. All right. You have an amazing uh, teaching career you share with people all over the world. And uh, I know they benefit tremendously from that. But yeah, you didn't know this stuff when you first started teaching because there's no way. No. <laughs> and, and probably because, you know, probably because a lot of the stuff that you're talking about right now didn't exist when you first started teaching, nor did it for me. We're, you know, basically at the same time we started teaching. So if you can go back to your first year and give yourself some advice, what advice would that be? I think it would definitely be to reach out to whoever is around you. I think that educators a lot of times feel like they're supposed to already know all the things like from day one and you don't. And so you have to ask questions. And I think that a lot, it's, it's this like, almost like a fear factor kind of thing. I speak about this a lot that they don't really know who to ask. So then they just go and try to figure it out on their own. And I think that's why we have so many people potentially that are leaving education mm -hmm. because they just burn themselves out. Whereas the person, you know, you don't have to go to a conference. You don't have to go listen. You know, I, I do love podcasts. I do love watching things, you know, um, on Twitter and on YouTube and all the things, but the teacher across the hall or down mm -hmm. the hall has so much experience and knowledge that I would tell myself, you know, go and invest in those relationships and ask them for their knowledge because they are always wanting to share. But a lot of teachers won't just go and volunteer that knowledge for you. You've got to ask for it. They don't want to step on your toes. Yeah. And that's probably, that's probably the biggest reason, right? Is, you know, they want to there, there's a little bit of, I don't want to, I don't want to be told what to do. So I don't want to go in and tell someone what to do, but if I'm mm -hmm. asked, you know, for advi advice, that's really important. And I'm making an assumption here. So probably in your school, you're probably, you know, have the most expertise in the area of technology, but I'd also say that just knowing you, you also know there's other areas that other teachers know way better than you. And you have no issue going to talk to them right now. Cause I think, that advice that you, you give is for your first day in school and your last day in school. Like you, you can use that anytime. There's always going to be Absolutely. people in your school that know way more than you in something. And so are you leveraging that? So this is why I like you so much. It's such a good, that's such a good advice. And so Thank what a you. blessing, what a blessing, um, to have connected with you and, um, to be able to like learn from you and all the stuff that you're doing in the classroom right now and that you have the opportunity to share it and, um, you know, blessing to your, principle too, for um, creating a space where you can really make an impact currently in school, but also have the opportunity to share your wisdom with the world. So I, I'm glad that we connected. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing you again. Not a, I don't know if they'll ever invite I've, I'm kind of like worn out my GATC. Well, <laughs> I've been no. a couple of times. I'll, I'll come I'll just sneak in there one year. But you're gonna be there this coming. No, no, I'm not. No, no. Uh, maybe. Hey, like, I might just have to pop in. I might have to pop in. But Hey, everyone, <laughs> make sure to connect with Kristen. And, and uh, like I said, in the, in the description down below, uh, you can download for free Steam for Little Learners. I know it's going to be super helpful, and you, you'll get that from here. So, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Kristen, thank you so much, you know, on a Tuesday, taking your time, you know, uh, to connect with me. Thanks. Thanks.